Australia's vast and unique coastline is the star in a new TV series by Scottish television presenter and archaeologist Neil Oliver. It's a journey of Australia with a distinct Scottish flavour. Remote and rugged, this is a land where time began. Ancient gorges and deep fjords fan out to magnificent bays dotted with primeval monoliths. Endless horizons everywhere. I have to say, in all my travels, this is some of the wildest, most edge-of-the-world feeling coastline I think I've ever seen. But there's also a very strong feeling from it that if you were to have been here 200 years ago or even 2,000 years ago, it would have looked just the same. That's Neil Oliver, part one of his new series on the History Channel. Neil, you've had a good look at it by now. In fact, from what I've seen, you've had a much better look than most of us ever get. What's the magic of Australia's coastline for you? I think that the impact I felt here that was somehow different than any other coast I had seen was a, a sense simultaneously of the great age of the continent and the coastline, uh, but also a very vivid sense of how constantly renewed it was so that it felt both old and brand spanking new simultaneously. And there was also a palpable sense of deep time. I was particularly struck, amongst many other highlights, by the Kimberley, mm. which is the, the territory of the first episode, mm. which just made me feel like a mosquito on a dinosaur's back. What was striking about the filming of it, uh, as well as I suppose it represented the landscape, was the, the sort of the massiveness of the landscape and the tiny little footprint that all you and your team were along those beaches. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a, a sequence uh, with um, Professor Tim Flannery talking about dinosaur footprints mm. up there in the Kimberley. And it puts the hairs up on the back of your neck when you, when you see these fossilised footprints and you see that these animals from hundreds of millions of years ago were out there doing their dinosaur thing and they've left marks that have lasted for all of that time and then you find yourself as a, as a brief and ephemeral human being briefly walking past these same marks and it puts you in your place. Yeah, it puts it all in context. We, we just heard you say there, in all my travels, this is some of the wildest coast I have seen. Now, you've seen a, a lot of coastlines, a lot of them pretty rugged coastlines around the, the British Isles, pretty rugged coastlines. What's the sort of the ruggedness that's so particular to the Australian coast? And is it just the extreme Kimberley coast? You're talking about there? No, no, I felt the same in large parts of the west coast. We did a, a, a run from, well, Perth up through Carnarvon, Coral Bay, Red Bluff, and there was the same feeling of, of immensity and age there. This is an enormous continent or island or country with a, a relatively small population, just 20 few million people, 23, 24 million people over this vast territory. Everywhere else that I have been, one way or another, feels more populated and you're, you're more expectant of more human contact. But so many times where we were filming around the Australian coastline, you felt as if you were never going to see another human being again. There was a, a very strong sense of the place not having changed in any kind of time frame that would make sense to human beings. I very, very often felt if I had been here 50,000 years ago, I bet that coastline was more or less, <laughs> give or take, as it is today. And that's that feeling of the human presence being transient and ephemeral was more profound here than anywhere else I've been. Talking about thousands of years ago, or one element, you've got a team of people around you. You've got, for instance, Tim Flannery, dealing with paleontology, but also dealing with notions of climate change. You've got archaeology experts, you've got indigenous experts, you've got landscape experts, anthropology experts. They're all part of your team. Mm. But the indigenous, certainly in the in the Kimberley episode anyway, there's a strong in indigenous theme about how the first Australians related to this coastline and how they used it. Mm -hmm. It's a funny one for me. I'm an archaeologist, really, by training. Uh, and I come from a, a background of, of studying uh, early prehistory in northern Western Europe, where you've got the presence or the, or the faint presence of earlier species of human being as well, earlier experiments with the human animal. So in addition to Homo sapiens, you know, there's evidence of the Neanderthals. There's traces of Homo heidelbergensis. Going, you know, going right back into the, the cousins of humankind. In Australia, it's Homo sapiens 
all the way. So on the one hand, you're talking 50,000 years ago, these people first found their way to this continent and started changing it and, and having a, a, a lasting impact upon it. And 50,000 years is a long time. But when, you're, when you come from a background where you've been considering a human impact of a sort for maybe a million years or 500,000 years, it, again, it gives you that other sense that yes, there, there have been Australians or there have been people in Australia for 50,000 years, but in the scheme of things, in the geological scheme that Tim Flannery thinks about, it's not a long time. We're still just recent arrivals on the surface of planet Earth. Uh, talking about Tim Flannery, he's also, of course, a leading voice on climate change in this country. In all the travel you've done, looking at all the coastline you've done, have you seen um, evidence or, you know, the, the threat to coastline that climate change is often cited as, as posing? We've done quite a few stories, certainly in the UK, uh, where we've looked at the way in which uh, the large-scale uh, and sometimes quite frightening levels of erosion uh, in places where we've done stories where people bought their houses 40 years ago and they were 100 or 200 yards, 200 metres from a, from a cliff edge and now their houses are falling into the sea. And there's, there's very many places that I could take you around the UK coastline where that is happening. And I know enough from, you know, from my studies to know that the, apart from anything else, the coast any coast is perhaps the most dynamic or one of the most dynamic environments that we have. You know, every wave that breaks changes the outline of the country forever. You think you know the shape of your country, when in fact you don't. It, it's changing second by second, moment by moment, hour by hour. And it's undoubted that all the coastlines of the world are changing. I'm more than happy to consider the possibility that the human animal in its seven billion strength on the planet is having an impact on the bigger picture. Uh, just how much of an effect we're having, I think even the scientists agree, is hard to gauge. I'm always very wary about somebody like me, who because my face is vaguely familiar, something that I say about a, a burgeoning issue is, is lent a weight that, that it wouldn't otherwise have if I wasn't a semi-familiar face. Mm. So I'm always very cautious about soapboxing for, for my own part but I think of Coast as a project an encyclopedic project and I think where its value lies or one of its values lies is in opening up a debate and providing uh, a very straightforward way in which people are invited to consider what's going on and I think what's most important of all this is my message if you like is that what I think Coast has done for me and what I would hope it would do for other people is that it's made me love the land more you know I was brought up loving Britain, loving Scotland, uh, but I fell more in love with it through getting to know it in, as a result of the Coast Project. And I think if, if something like Coast encourages us to love where we live more than we do, then that can only be a good thing. Well, Australians love the beach. Now you're seeing sort of coastline and the way you see it, it's, it's slightly more than most of us get to see it when we're down at beach level. But do you think this will change the way we interact with the beach? One of the simple wonders of Coast is the use of aerial photography. Because there's, there's no doubting that you can be very familiar with your own favourite beach mm. and you can think you know it at the back of your hand, but if you've never seen it from above, it's suddenly getting that different perspective has a huge effect. And I think coast in general and in total will simply give Australians a fresh view of their landscape, which can only be a good thing. RN, your world unfolding. <laughs>